Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries. Uh, I got a disclaimer. I was called out, and I have to admit, I wrong. So, but before I do that, um, I got a week's ban on um, Facebook for uh, posting true information about the vaccine. All I know is uh, it is made with uh, aborted fetal DNA and um, not a good thing. So, boy, it's they're tightening the news. It's getting to the point you can't talk about anything. Matter of fact, I got the, uh, the ban on YouTube for the same information. So, whatever. Uh, but the uh, disclaimer where I was wrong is for those of you that know the word of god under no circumstances can we take the mark of the beast in whatever form it is and the bible says you will not be able to buy or sell without it now there comes a time when the beast is going to want to have worship so let's go into that a little bit now my opinion is rather i should say my hope is um, uh, and please understand something sometimes to get quiet in the house i have to do these bible studies three four five o'clock in the morning i'm tired sometimes what i think i want to say and then what i say are you know i make mistakes uh boy i've made a lot of mistakes i'm an expert on making mistakes but <clears throat> the thing is i'm hoping that there are going to be people that don't know the word of god that might take the mark and possibly hear people when they're taken before councils and that the Holy Spirit speaks through them, perhaps the Holy Spirit will touch their heart. Maybe they'll take a knife and cut the mark out of their hand and proclaim proudly and loudly and boldly that Jesus Christ is Lord and I'm not going to serve the beast. Cut my head off. And I would like to think that the Lord would, uh, somebody dies for the faith, even though they had taken the mark, that perhaps he would grant them salvation. That's my hope. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying I hope. Because I really, really would like to see that happen. I mean, let's look at something. In Matthew 10, 32, Jesus says, Whosoever... Therefore shall confess me before men. Him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. And then in verse 33, it says, But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Now, do we want to hear um, the Lord deny us before God the Father and his angels? I uh, hey, not me. All right, let's take a look at Matthew 26. In verse 26, Matthew 26, 26. Uh, this is the Last Supper. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them and saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung an hymn, uh, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night for it is written i will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered abroad but after i am risen again i will go before you into galilee 
Oh, okay. Now here, listen to this. Verse 33. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended of because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Oh boy, Peter. Peter reminds me of me in a lot of ways. Or should I say I remind, I don't know, something like that. Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice, not once, not twice, but thrice, three times. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Oh boy. All right, so. Uh, let's see. So Judas comes with the, uh, the temple guards. They arrest Jesus. They take him in for the trial, the show trial. Okay, and uh, Peter follows him, right? All right, let's go to verse 69. Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied, but he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. You know, uh, basically, I don't know what you're talking about. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto him, them that were there, This fellow also was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thy speech bewrayeth thee. Uh, so he had a Galilean accent, okay? I mean, you know, people have accents. You go to New York, certainly different from somebody that lives in Georgia. And, you know, Texas has kind of their little accent and... People from the Midwest or, you know, they got their little thing, you know. Verse 74. So they said, surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech bewrayeth thee. Then began he, Peter, then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. You know, I'm just... I'm not saying this is the mark of the beast or this is actually the same type of situation, but, it, you know, Jesus said, hey, you deny me before men, him will I deny before my father and his angels. Well, that's another, that's in another place, probably Luke or I don't know. But the thing is, Peter went out, repented, wept, and then what did Peter do? He preached boldly. After Pentecost. And according to, uh, oh, I don't remember if it's the Bible says that Peter died for the faith or if it's just legend, but Peter died for the faith according to everything that I understand. So was he rejected because he denied Jesus? No, he wasn't. But the mark of the beast, that's another whole nother can of worms. That's a whole nother story. You know, the Bible says you take the mark, you're in deep doo-doo. 
Yeah. So let's read a few places where it talks about the mark. All right, Revelation 13. And verse 15. And he, the false prophet, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Now, it's extremely, I, I think it's extremely likely that until we see the beast and the false prophet, uh, until we see these things happen, uh, the mark of the beast won't be here. Uh, that's my guess. Uh, don't take my word for it 100%. I would hate to be wrong. I've been wrong before. But And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, and the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And I wonder if, I wonder if it's television. I mean, you know, television is evil. Verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. 666. So it seems to be the beast is tied in with the, um, the mark. Now, here's the promise of those that take the mark. Now, I would like to think, my opinion, personally, I would like to think that those that knew the Bible, those that went to church, those that, you know, had some knowledge of the Bible, those that knowingly take the mark of the beast, I mean, you're basically giving your allegiance to the beast and denying Christ. And there's going to be people, I'm pretty sure, that are going to say, well, you know, Lord, I had to take the mark to feed my family. And what is the Lord going to, pro maybe something he might say along the lines of, what, uh, you didn't have faith in me that I could feed you? I fed the Israelites in the desert, in the wilderness, when I brought them up out of Egypt for 40 years. Their shoes never wore out. Water came out of the rock. I fed them with manna. And you didn't think I could protect you and your family? Maybe, you know, maybe the Lord would say something like that. I don't know. I mean, what do I know? I'm just a mortal. I don't know what the Lord would say. But something like that wouldn't surprise me if he did say that. And it's true. He did. He supplied water in the desert and manna and their shoes never wore out their clothes never wore out i mean 40 years boy that's one great pair of shoes um i bought a pair of wolverines one time back when they were american made back in the early 90s and uh those pair of wolverines i had two pairs of them and uh they lasted me i wore them every day they lasted me between four and a half and five years. Of course, they were expensive. They were like $120 back when an ounce of silver was $5. Yeah, back when I could have got a dollar breakfast at the uh, little mom and pop Greek restaurant. When's the last time you've seen a dollar breakfast? I mean, you know, eggs, toast, and uh, potatoes a buck you know well if you wanted a cup of coffee it was 50 cents extra but you know i remember that clinton was i think clinton was president or from bush to clinton i don't remember so 
you know, hundred dollars for a pair of shoes back, hundred and twenty bucks or so for a pair of shoes back then. That was a lot of money. You know, I think I was making twelve bucks an hour back then, maybe ten. But Revelation fourteen nine. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, ah, so you got to worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture. Uh, it's poured out full strength, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. What is indignation? Extreme hatred. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, the holy angels. Now, there's holy angels, there's unholy angels. Yeah, a third of them. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Uh, that's a long time, people. And they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Now, that's for those of us that know, know this stuff, right? Verse 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. God doesn't care if you're a Jew that keeps the commandments. If you don't have the faith of Jesus, you're in a big, you're big trouble. And what commandments? Jesus said, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. Of course, the Seventh-day Adventists will try to tell you, oh, you got to keep that Sabbath. You got to keep that Sabbath. But I think I'll believe Jesus with the two commandments. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. So, do you love the Lord Jesus Christ? I would like to believe that there's going to be people that didn't know and possibly get saved in the tribulation but uh, then again, as somebody pointed out to me, the Bible talks about consciences seared with a hot iron. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, we read verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, the end times, some shall depart from the faith. So they had faith and then they leave it. I keep hearing people talk about, oh, eternal security, once saved, always saved. I wish I could believe that. But it says people here are departing from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared, with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry, that's a doctrine of de devils. And commanding to abstain from meats. Vegetarianism is a doctrine of devils. Uh, now, if you do it for health reasons, that's one thing. But I mean, you're doing it out of your own conscience or if you don't want to harm animals. But, you know, when you start teaching it as a, a religious thing, like uh, I heard Jana D. Noon uh, says that she follows the Essenes. Uh, it says not to be cruel to animals. I'm like, well, where's that? Oh, that's in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Well, guess who's in charge of the Dead Sea Scrolls? Not the Christians. No, the, the Antichrist over in the Middle East. They're in charge of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, I've never been allowed to look at them, so I don't know what they say. But uh, 
the my Bible says that when uh, the uh, Peter and them were fishing, that uh, Jesus was on the seashore and he was grilling fish for them. So what does that do for their doctrine of the Essenes? You know, aren't fish animals? I mean, really? So, but they're going to be and commanding, commanding. So in other words, they're telling other people, commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Now we're talking about clean meats. Okay, we're not talking about unclean meats, my opinion. Verse 4. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. All right, so in Revelation 16, let's read that real quick. Verse 1, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Now, I find it interesting that um, there's a microchip that they're using and they use uh, lithium. You ever heard of lithium batteries? Yeah. I was a photographer. Lithium batteries are incredible on uh, flash flash units. Um, but uh, yeah, incredible. They are so much better than alkaline batteries. They last. And they're uh, subject to temperature extremes too. But... Suppose the angels caused the uh, microchip to crack or leak and lithium got in your body. It would cause a grievous sore from what I understand. So I'm not saying this is true. I'm not saying this is true. I'm just saying this is my research and my guess. And the first one out in port out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Okay. All right, so let's, uh, Revelation 19. Verse 20. Well, how about Revelation 19, 19? And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. You know what Trump's space force is for? This is it. They are going to oppose Christ returning. That's the real reason for the space force. The whole world is going to oppose Christ. That battle will probably take a fraction of a second, but hey. Verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet. And the false prophet will probably call himself Elijah. Because he's going to try to fool the whole world. And... I forget what book it's in, one of the minor prophets, but it says that Elijah the prophet will come before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Uh, let me take a look at that. That's in Malachi chapter 4 and verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful, dreadful day of the Lord. I suspect that the false prophet will dare claim that he is Elijah, and then the real Elijah is going to come. And both of them are going to be able to do miracles, but the one Elijah is going to be 
preaching repentance and Jesus Christ. The other one is going to be preaching the beast. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's go back. Revelation 19 and verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles. You see, the false prophet's going to be able to do miracles. That wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. All I know is uh, people that didn't trust the Lord that take the mark are doomed. However, my opinion, my hope, my hope is that some people that didn't know better before that they hope my my hope is that some people will get saved during the tribulation after all the lord is a merciful god and praise him for that because if he wasn't i'd have been in hell 40 years ago or more or more well 45 or 50 years ago Let's read Luke 12 and verse 8. Jesus speaking. Also I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But Unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. And when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. The Holy Ghost is going to speak through his believers when they're, and I think this is the tribulation period. Uh, well, not this is not exclusively the tribulation period, but, you know, this probably has happened over the last, over a thousand years. Probably over the last 1900 years or more. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, will tell us what to say if we are brought before the council and are going to die for the faith. There's going to be a time when they're going to give their testimony. And why? Why would we be giving a testimony if everybody is going to be, you know, cast into hell? Because the Lord's merciful and he wants certain people to be saved. He wants people to repent and come to him. And I'm not sure if that'll happen to those that take the mark of the beast. It doesn't, doesn't look pretty for those that take the mark. It doesn't. Now, here is Mark 13. This is a companion gospel to Mark, uh, Matthew 24. They asked Jesus what it would be like at the end of the world. Um, you know, let's go to verse 7. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be. But the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. But take heed to yourselves. For they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. Okay. Um, I cannot hardly wait 
I would love to see it on television. But all these uh, Zionist churchgoers, I would love to be seeing them go to the synagogues and get beaten for their faith in Christ. I want to see it. I really do. I just wonder how many of them will deny Christ. I bet you more than you can shake a stick at. For they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten. And ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake for a testimony against them. See, some of us are going to have to do a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death and the father of the son, and children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And that name is not Yeshua HaMashiach. No, that name is Jesus. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Will there be people uh, that come to Christ when these people are speaking in the Holy, of the, by the Holy Ghost? Giving their testimony? I don't know. I would like to think so. I would like to think so. And I think if somebody heard that and was convicted of their sin and took a knife and dug the mark of the beast out of their hand and proclaimed proudly and loudly and boldly and said, Jesus Christ is Lord. I will not deny him. And were led to the guillotine and had their heads cut off. I have to wonder. Would the Lord accept them? I don't know. But on another note, let's read one more thing. Now remember something. You know, Peter was told, you know, they were all told, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before Father. I'll deny you before the Father's angels, right? Peter denied Christ, but he ended up repenting and uh, preaching boldly Christ, and he died for the faith, as far as I know. But uh, the mark of the beast, I tell you what, I sure wouldn't want to take it and take my chances. Just like people that uh, want to do their deathbed confession. Oh, I'm going to live the way I want to live. And then, you know, bef uh, an hour before I die, I'll, I'll ask Jesus to come into my heart. I, you know, you might die two hours before that happens. But in Ma Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them, the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not, and which had not worshipped a beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Well, you know, now that I've read this again, ah. Uh, it says, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Yeah, it looks like I was wrong. It looks like if you take the mark, you're done. It's finished. Kaput. So, I don't know. Maybe somebody will... Uh, repent and get their head cut off and 
cut the mark of the beast out of their hand, but I don't know. I don't know. I think the Lord will tell everybody in one way or another, you take the mark, you're damned. You worship the beast, you're damned. That's it. So, so my apologies on the last uh, Bible. All right, everybody, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in uh, Jesus' precious name. Amen.